Today we will discuss about virtual displacement. So I will explain this concept using a simple example and that is a familiar one to you, simple pendulum. A simple pendulum consists of a bob of mass m and it is attached to a string of length l and the other end of the string is fixed at some point. This is called point of suspension S. Okay. Now, when this pendulum is in the vertical position, it is known as equilibrium position because then the weight of the bob will act downward and the tension in the string will act upward. These two are equal and the net force acting on the bob will be zero when it is at the vertical position. When the net force acting on a system is zero, it is known as equilibrium position. So this vertical position is the equilibrium position. Now suppose you displace the bob through an angle theta to the vertical, then the position of bob at a particular instant is here. At this position, we can mark the forces acting on the system. Okay. The weight of the bob acting vertically downward that is represented by this uh, black arrow and the tension in the string. Tension in a string is always towards the fixed point and it is denoted by this red arrow. These two are the forces acting on this bob at this particular point. These two forces are not opposite, not opposite. So the resultant will not be zero. The resultant will not be zero. So I can write the forces acting on the bob as weight that is denoted as F1. It is minus mg into y cap because this is the coordinate system I used to represent. Horizontal axis is x, vertical upward axis is y. Here the weight is acting vertically downward. So that will be minus, okay, minus mg y cap. Tension in the string that is denoted as F2, that is T. We can split this into two components. T can be split into two components, one vertical component and one horizontal component. Vertical component will be cos component because this angle is theta. So this vertical, uh, the angle between T and vertical will also be theta. Alternate angles are equal. Thus, therefore, the vertical component is T cos theta. It is along y direction. So, T cos theta y cap. Then, horizontal component is along the negative x direction and it will be sine component. So, it is minus T sine theta into x cap. These are the forces acting on the bow. Now, you can apply Newton's second law. What is Newton's second law? Force acting on a system is mass into acceleration. Since force is a vector quantity, this Newton's law is also a vector equation. You can split this into components. Component along x direction is fx equal to mAx. Component along y direction, fy equal to mAy. m into ax, ax you can write it as acceleration is second derivative of position. Since it is the acceleration along x direction, you can write it as d square x by dt square and that is x double dot. This single dot represents a time derivative. If you have two time derivatives, you can put two dots. So, m x double dot means m into d square x by dt square. m y double dot means m into d square y by dt square. d square y by dt square is the acceleration along y direction. So these are Newton's equations in component form. Now you can equate this is the force along x direction and the given force is weight and tension and in this the force which is along the x direction is only this minus t sin theta. I can write mx double dot is equal to minus t sin theta. What are the forces acting along y direction? There are two forces one is t cos theta y cap and minus mg y cap. So, I can write it as t cos theta minus mg that is equal to m y double dot. These two are the Newton's equations of motion for this problem. 
we can eliminate this t tension between the two equations for that from first equation you can write t as minus mx double dot by sin theta from the first equation you can write t as minus mx double dot by sin theta you substitute that t value in the second equation so you'll get my double dot equal to t is minus mx double dot by sin theta into this cos theta minus mg this cos theta by sin theta is cot theta so that will be my double dot equal to minus mx double dot cot theta minus mg call it as equation number three but from this figure you can see that the x coordinate x coordinate of this box that is this length is simply l into if the length of the string is l you can say that this length is l sin theta l sin theta because from this right angled triangle sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse so opposite side will be hypotenuse into sin theta l sin theta okay so x is equal to l sin theta that means x dot if you take a derivative l is constant derivative of sin theta is cos theta into theta dot because derivative is with respect to t cos theta derivative is sorry sin theta derivative is cos theta if you are taking derivative with respect to theta now the derivative is with respect to time so there will be a theta dot also similarly y is equal to minus l cos theta this length is y it is in the downward direction so there will be a negative and this is l cos theta so minus l cos theta taking y dot you will get l minus cos theta derivative is sin theta into theta dot take one more derivative x double dot x double dot there are two functions cos theta and theta dot so you keep l theta dot constant derivative of cos theta minus sin theta into theta dot there is already a theta dot so that becomes theta dot square plus l into cos theta you can keep it as constant derivative of theta dot will give you theta double dot in the same fashion you can calculate y double dot l sin theta into theta dot derivative is theta double dot l theta dot into sin theta derivative is cos theta theta dot so that becomes theta dot square so you already obtained the equations for x double dot and y double dot you can substitute this in equation 3 in equation 3 then 3 becomes l cos theta theta dot square plus l sin theta theta double dot instead of this y double dot m you can cancel from here there is an m in all terms so you can cancel that m and you can put for y dot this equation x dot x double dot this equation and there is a cot theta minus g so all that you will get this equation as theta double dot is equal to minus g by l sin theta theta double dot as minus g by l sin theta you just rearrange the terms okay then you will get it as theta double dot minus equal to minus g by l sin theta this is, this is equation number eight this equation is uh, familiar to you because you can write this as d square theta by dt square plus g by l sin theta equal to zero. And if theta is very small, you can write it as d square theta by dt square plus some omega zero square theta equal to zero, where omega zero is square root of g by l. That is the angular frequency of simple pendulum. Now the question is, is there any alternate way to obtain this equation of motion? Now we arrived this equation of motion by considering Newton's equations of motion. For that we have to first identify the forces acting on the body and we have to know the techniques to add vectors that is by resolving components and identifying the components along the same direction and all. So all this how to know if we deal with vectors. Is there any alternate way to obtain the same equation of motion? That is the question. Answer is yes. If tension, the constraint force doesn't do any work, 
we can apply conservation of energy to solve the problem. Since the remaining force, gravity is conservative force. What is the meaning of conservative force? Conservative force, if work done is path independent, if the work done by a force is path independent, that is work done over a closed path is zero. If the initial point and final point are same, work done is zero. That implies that work done is a path independent work done. Okay. So, if you have two points, say this is A and this is B, if the work done in moving a particle from A to B is path independent, then we can say that for two different paths, the work done will be same. And if you consider the closed path, one of them will be negative and total work done will be zero. So, work done is path independent means work done over a closed path is zero. Both have the same meaning. If this happens for a particular force, we can say that that force is conservative. Why the name conservative force? What is conserved here? So, consider this case. Work done is defined as integral f dot dr where f is the force and dr is the infinitesimal displacement. Integrating this quantity, you will get total work. Suppose the force can be written as negative gradient of some scalar quantity. We usually call it as potential. Suppose the force can be written as negative gradient of potential. You can substitute for this f that is minus del v dot dr. But del v dot dr is nothing but dv. Del v dot dr is dv. This is a standard expression and this negative sign is there. Integrating, you will get V, upper limit is B, lower limit is A. So, you will get it as V evaluated at B minus V evaluated at A. There is a negative sign outside. So, this will be like V of A minus V of B. Change in potential energy. This V is potential energy. Now, work energy theorem states that work done is equal to change in kinetic energy. When a particle moves from A to B, the total work done is nothing but the change in kinetic energy. That is final kinetic energy T at B minus initial kinetic energy T at A. This T stands for kinetic energy. Now, you can equate these two expressions. Both gives work. So, V of A minus V of B, right hand side of first equation. Right hand side of second equation is T of B minus T of A. Equating this, you can take T of A to the left hand side and V of B to the right hand side. So, you will get V of A plus T of A equal to V of B plus T of B. This is kinetic energy plus potential energy evaluated at the starting point. This is kinetic energy plus potential energy evaluated at the final point. Both are same. That is mechanical energy is conserved. So, if the work done, if the work done, depends only on n points that is it is just the difference of potential energy at a and at b that is it depends only on n points doesn't depend on the path it depends only on the values at n points is if work done is path independent like this then mechanical energy will be a conserved quantity that is why it is called a conservative force okay such forces are called conservative Force. Now, if the system has only conservative forces, we can apply the conservation of energy or conservation of mechanical energy. But if there are constrained forces that need not be conservative, in such cases, again we can apply the conservation of energy techniques if the work done by constrained force is zero. If the work done by constraint force is zero, then the remaining is only the conservative forces. So, we can apply again the conservation of energy principles. Here, in this example, it is very clear that when the bob moves, the displacement is perpendicular to the tension. Displacement is perpendicular to the tension. So, work done by the tension for an infinitesimal displacement dr is dw equal to t dot dr. t we already have the equation t cos theta y cap minus t sin theta x cap. 
dr you can write it as dx x cap plus dy y cap because your bob is something like this and the displacement is we can write it as like this this displacement you can split into two components one along x direction and one along y direction they are respectively dx and dy so displacement you can write it as dx x cap x cap plus dy y cap tension you split into t cos theta y cap minus t sin theta x cap t dot dr for calculating that we have to know what is dx you already have an expression for x it is l sin theta so what is dx dx will be l into sin theta differentially is cos theta d theta similarly y is minus l cos theta so dy will be l sin theta d theta substitute for this dx and dy and take the dot product you will get it as dw equal to t cos theta into dx is l cos theta d theta so t cos theta this is y cap y cap dot y cap is 1 y cap dot x cap is 0 x cap dot x cap is 1 x cap dot y cap is 0 so two terms will vanish and remaining two terms are one is t cos theta l sin theta d theta other one is t sin theta l cos theta d theta but one is positive the other one is negative so you will get zero work done by the constraint force or work done by the tension is zero for this uh, motion of bob okay for this motion of bob that means we can use conservation of energy conservation of energy what is the conserved quantity mechanical energy kinetic energy plus potential energy is constant what is kinetic energy kinetic energy is simply half m v square potential energy is mgh this is constant here v is we will have two components vx and vy we will have two components one along x direction and one along y direction x direction you can write it as x dot dx by dt so half m v square becomes half m into x dot square plus half m v y square is y dot square plus potential energy potential energy is mgl into 1 minus cos theta why it is mgl into 1 minus cos theta because the reference point reference point is equilibrium position suppose the bob is at this position when it is vertical and now the position is somewhere here so this height this height mg into this height will give you potential energy of this mass this is the equilibrium position potential energy is zero when it reaches here it makes a height difference of l minus l cos theta so mg into l minus l cos theta is the potential energy so sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy is constant now take derivative take derivative of this expression you have half m x dot square derivative is 2x dot into x double dot because derivative is with respect to t x dot square derivative with respect to x dot is 2x dot okay if you have d by dx of x square that will be 2x but if you have d by dt of x square that will be 2x into 2x into you have to take one more derivative dx by dt okay that is the idea here the derivative is not with respect to x dot it is with respect to t so you will get half m into x dot square derivative is 2x dot into x double dot 2x dot into x double dot that 2 will cancel you will get it as m x dot x double dot plus second time will give you m y dot y double dot plus last time will give you mgl into 1 derivative is 0 minus cos theta derivative is sin theta theta dot is equal to 0. We already have equations for x dot, y dot, x double dot, y double dot. We already have the equations x dot, y dot, x double dot, y double dot. So substitute that equations here. So substitute that equations in this expression and solve this you will get it as theta double dot is equal to minus g by l sin theta. Theta double dot is equal to minus g by l sin theta. 
the same expression we obtained using Newtonian formulation. So, by using the forces and the resolving forces into components and using the laws of vector addition, we obtained equation 8. And by simply taking kinetic energy and potential energy and by taking one derivative, we obtained the same expression. So, this is an easier method. Second one. No need to know about forces. Okay. No need to identify the forces. No need to use component notation. No need to use vector addition. Okay. Simply take kinetic energy and potential energy. Then take one derivative. You will obtain the same expression. So, if the work done by constraint forces are zero, then solving the problem is very easy. No need to deal with the forces and its component. Okay. Now, is the work done by constraint forces are always zero? Is this a general statement? For all problems, work done by constraint forces, zero? Absolutely not. Okay. They are not always like that. Sometimes the work done by constraint forces may not be zero. So, consider such an example. Consider a simple pendulum whose length varies as a function of time. Consider a problem in which the length of the pendulum varies with respect to time according to some equation. Okay, suppose L is f of t. L is not a constant, but it is a function of time. Okay, uh, f can be any function. Okay, you take a general case. Length of the pendulum is a time dependent function. L is equal to f of t. Then x is L cos theta that becomes f of t sin theta. Y is minus l cos theta that becomes f of t cos theta then what is dx dx is f of t cos theta d theta plus this is also a function of time so you have to take the derivative of this also that means sin theta into what is the derivative of f of t you can write it as f dot dt f dot dt okay now this is differential, okay, not derivative. This is differential. So, you have to take first f of t constant, then sin theta differential is cos theta d theta. Then you have to take sin theta as constant. The differential of f of t is df by dt into dt. df by dt into dt and that you can write it as f dot dt. Similarly, dy, dy, you keep f of t as constant minus cos theta differential is sin theta d theta. Then you keep f of t cos theta. Uh, minus cos theta as constant f of t differential is f dot dt. Now work done by the constraint force dw is t dot dr. T we already have minus t sin theta x cap plus t cos theta y cap. No change for that. The only change is pendulum has a varying length. That is the only change. Tension is the same but displacement is different. Okay, You have to substitute for dx and dy this values. Then what happens? X cap dot X cap that will give you a non-zero time. X cap dot Y cap is zero. Y cap dot X cap is zero. Y cap dot Y cap will give you a non-zero time. So the terms are something like this: minus t f of t sine theta cos theta d theta minus t sine square theta f dot dt plus t f of t cos theta sine theta d theta minus t cos square theta f dot dt. The first, this term and this term will cancel, but there are two additional terms. This will not vanish. So, you will get a non-zero work. You will get a non-zero work. Work done by the constraint force is non-zero. It is not possible to apply the conservation of energy techniques that we did earlier. Okay. Now, why the work done by constraint force is non-zero? Please look at this figure. The first figure is the one with L is equal to constant. Length of the string is constant. Then this tension at any instant and the instantaneous displacement dr will be perpendicular to each other. Work done will be zero. This is the first case. And in the second case, if you have the length of pendulum which varies with respect to time, that is length is a function of time. L is equal to f of t. At a particular instant, this is the length and this is the mass. After a small instant of time, dt, the length varies. Length varies. So, this is the new length. 
so this is the actual displacement of the bob in that small interval of time dt and this displacement is not perpendicular to the tension at this point and at this point they are not perpendicular to each other so this dr and t are not perpendicular that is why the work done is non zero now if we develop a new formulation by arguing that work done for a particular displacement and we will define that as virtual displacement and if that work done for that displacement is zero then it will be beneficial how it become beneficial for that to understand you have to wait for next video also in the next video we will discuss about the principle of virtual work and d'alembert's principle and thereby uh, obtaining a new set of equations it is like grange's equations so the starting point of all those things are this one okay the definition of a new displacement known as virtual displacement so what is virtual displacement for a pendulum with length of pendulum l is a function of time the actual displacement is given by dr is equal to f of t cos theta d theta plus sin theta into f dot dt x cap plus f of t sin theta d theta minus cos theta f dot dt y cap in this this first terms this term plus this term these two terms together is given by this thing delta r and its sum with this df that is the second term and that is given by this term and this term okay these two terms together will give you this length okay the vector sum of this two will give you the actual displacement so the actual displacement is the sum of two terms one is delta r that you already calculated and that is same as this thing okay that is dx x cap plus dy y cap and that is nothing but l cos theta d theta x cap plus l sin theta d theta y cap okay instead of l you have f of t so that term is the first one f of t cos theta d theta x cap plus f of t sin theta d theta y cap that is delta r and there is one more term and due to the time dependence of f of t or length of the pendulum is time dependent and that makes a term like sin theta f dot dt x cap minus cos theta f dot dt y cap and from the figure you can see that it is this distance so the vector sum of these two will give you the actual displacement so what i am going to do is i will assume that uh, dt is zero okay we are going to make a displacement for which dt is zero we are going to define a new displacement for which dt is zero if you take dt is zero these two terms in this uh, green circles these two terms will vanish then that new displacement i will denote it as delta r and that is given by f of t cos theta d theta x cap plus f of t sin theta d theta y cap okay for this displacement from this figure it is clear that this delta r is perpendicular to the tension and for that delta r work done by the constraint force that is tension will be zero okay so if we redefine displacement like this actual displacement is there but we are going to define a new displacement that is known as virtual displacement it is not the real one because it happens uh, with the dt equal to zero dt equal to zero means there is no change in time so a displacement with no change in time is not a real one that is why it is named as virtual displacement and this concept is introduced only for a mathematical uh, formulation mathematical formulation and for from this formulation or from the principle of virtual work we can derive a useful uh, equation of motion that is known as lagrange's equations okay so the final conclusion is 
if problem contains only scleronomic constraints that is time independent constraints there is only actual displacement no need of virtual displacement or we can say that the actual displacement itself is virtual displacement okay there is no new concept like virtual displacement your actual displacement and virtual displacement are the same but if problem contains rheonomic constraints rheonomic constraints that is time dependent constraints then you need the concept virtual displacement and the virtual displacement will be different from actual displacement for time independent constraints if you want to define a virtual displacement you can say that it is equal to the actual displacement but in the case of rheonomic constraints that is time dependent constraints these two concepts are different entirely different in the two examples i explained the first one is l is a constant that is a rheonomic constraint the second one is l is equal to f of t l is equal to f of t this is a time dependent constraint when l is equal to f of t you have to define a new displacement which is known as virtual displacement then the work done by the constraint force for that virtual displacement will be zero okay so the concept of virtual displacement is needed only when there is a time dependent constraint is it clear i will explain one more example you consider a rod a bead is moving through the rod a bead is moving through the rod what is the constraint force in order to keep this bead on the rod there should be a normal reaction n that is the constraint force and displacement is along this direction if you take the work done then you can write it as n dot dx is equal to zero because these two are perpendicular to each other okay now consider another case the rod itself is moving towards right with some velocity v the rod itself is moving towards right with the velocity v and the bead is moving along the rod the first case the rod is fixed the bead is moving along the rod second case the rod itself is moving parallel to x axis rod itself is moving parallel to x axis with the velocity v and bead is moving along it if suppose at t equal to 0 this is the position of bead after an instant dt after a small interval of time dt rod reaches this position that is this distance is v dt v is the velocity of rod and bead is moving along this rod and it reaches to this position so the actual displacement of bead what is the actual displacement of bead this is the initial position this is the final position the actual displacement is denoted as dx and it can be written as the sum of two terms one is vdt the other one is delta x so we can write the actual displacement dx as vdt plus delta x again your normal reaction again your normal reaction is in a direction perpendicular to the road it will be always perpendicular to the road normal reaction but now this n and dx are not perpendicular now n and dx are not perpendicular not perpendicular that means work done by constraint force work done by n is not equal to zero because they are not perpendicular dot product is the work done so they are not perpendicular means work done is not zero but if you take this delta x only if you take the delta x only that is you make dt zero if you make dt zero that is you are considering the displacement at a particular instant dt is equal to zero then this delta x and n are perpendicular delta x and n are perpendicular work done by the force will be zero so if we define virtual displacement as virtual displacement as delta x then work done will be work done will be n dot delta x both are perpendicular that will be zero so in this problem this is a time dependent constraint this is a time dependent constraint what is the constraint here in the first problem 
if you denote the position of this particle by x y and this angle is alpha we know that y is equal to x tan alpha because tan alpha is y by x so y is equal to x tan alpha this is a scleronomic constraint scleronomic constraint but in this example what is the coordinate x y coordinate this height is y and the length from origin length from origin is x but this distance is v dt so you can say that this distance is x minus v dt so we can say that alpha tan alpha is tan alpha is y divided by x minus v dt or y is equal to x minus v dt into tan alpha x minus v dt into tan alpha so that is a time dependent constraint that is a time dependent constraint and that is a rheonomic constraint so whenever you have rheonomic constraint actual displacement and virtual displacement are different whenever you have a scleronomic constraint no need to define a virtual displacement actual displacement itself is uh, enough to have the problem to do the or to solve the problem okay no need to define the virtual displacement at all you need to define virtual displacement only when there is a time dependent constraint okay. if you have a time dependent constraint the work done by the constraint force may not be zero in that case in order to make the work done by the constraint force zero for a particular displacement you can define a new displacement which is called a virtual displacement virtual displacement and that is defined as the displacement which happens at a particular instant that is you put all the dt is equal to zero okay this is the idea of virtual displacement and this concept will be clear when we uh, move on further or when we derive the Lagrange's equations. Okay.